Okay, troops, we have our deflection tube set up, same as in the last video, with our 5,000 volt EHT supply. I'm wanting this at about 4,500 volts. And we have our Helmholtz coils attached that can provide a magnetic field to deflect the beam. And we've also got a 6 volt battery pack, a variable resistor, and an ammeter to measure the current. So let's turn that ammeter on. And we're going to connect this little CD circuit so that a current is flowing from the battery pack through the Helmholtz coils which are in series and they are providing our magnetic field. Anyway, we're going to use this apparatus to try and measure the charge to mass ratio of an electron. And we do that by using the current that's flowing through the Helmholtz coils and the radius of curvature of that beam of electrons. Now, in order to do the experiment, there are only a couple of things we need to measure. We need to measure, firstly, the anode voltage. That's the voltage that the electrons are being accelerated through the anode of the electron gun. So I'm setting that to 4,500 volts, 4,500. Okay. The other thing we need to measure is the radius of curvature of that beam. Now we do that by selecting some coordinates on that grid. An X coordinate and a Y coordinate. For example, at the moment, if I look along my X axis, it's at about nine centimeters and on the Y axis, it's about two centimeters. So working from right to left, if our origin is at the mouth of the electron gun, then we've moved nine centimetres to the left and two centimetres down. That coordinate would be x equals nine, y equals two. And the other thing we need to measure is the current. And for different currents, we're going to get different x, y coordinates. And we are going to make a note of them on a sheet of paper. So, here's roughly what I'm planning to do on a sheet of paper here. For different currents, I'm going to set the current at 0 0.2 amps, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. And for different currents, I can work out what the size of the magnetic field would be using a little equation that was in the manufacturer's catalogue. The magnetic field is equal to 4.2 times 10 to the minus 3 Tesla per amp. So all I have to do is multiply those currents by 4.2 times 10 to the minus 3 and I'll get the size of the magnetic field in Tesla. And I'm going to measure the corresponding X and Y coordinate values. And from them, I can work out the radius of the beam using a little bit of geometry. But all I'm measuring at the moment is the current and the corresponding X, Y coordinate. Let's go. Okay, I have moved the rheostat and so my current is 0.2 amps that's my first reading on the table and my first corresponding reading on my xy coordinate is now i'm going to go on my x-axis 8 and my y coordinate would be about 1.2 centimeters there we go now I'm going to increase the current to 0.3 amps and see what my next pair of coordinates are. So I'm just moving the variable resistor and my current will change. I want it to be 0.3 amps. So at 0.3 amps, my corresponding component, I'm going for, and it's pretty much, when x is 6, y is equal to 1, so 6 and 1. And then when my raw results table, and I'm going to come 
continue with that at 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 and 0.7 amps. Now I'm at 0.4 amps. I did have to introduce more battery packs there so that I could get that current. But that's okay, they're all in series. I've adjusted the resistor so my current is 0.4 and the corresponding coordinates I'm going to use on the screen I reckon at about 7 centimetres on the x-axis is 2 centimetres on my y-axis so 7 and 2 Moved up to 0.5 amps 0.5 amps we're going for this time we're going to use x-coordinate 5 y coordinate 1.2 5 1.2 0 0.6 amps i've had to increase my batteries up to a full 12 volts now to get that current from that resistor and i'm going to go for let's have a look i think six on my x-axis and 2.3 2.3 on my y-axis. Okay, last one. It's about the limit of the current I can get from these battery packs and this 8 ohm rheostat. So 0.7 amps corresponding to, if I go to 4 this time, 4 on my x-axis. Now you could use any x-coordinate you want and the corresponding y-coordinate. I'm just going to go for 4, and my Y is about 1.1, 4, 1.1. So that's all my raw results. I'm now going to go and work out all the B values, the size of the magnetic field, and I'm also going to calculate the radius of curvature of the beam. So that was our apparatus. Fairly straightforward. Let's go and work out the charge to mass ratio of an electron. There's my table all filled in. Now, before we work out the charge to mass ratio of an electron, we've got a little bit of theory to do. Well, historically, it wasn't possible to determine either the charge or the mass of an electron, but in 1897, J.J. Thomson managed to determine the charge to mass ratio of the electron using a very similar apparatus to what we are using a 5 kilovolt extra high tension supply with our deflection tube and a pair of Helmholtz coils if you want to see the setup see my previous video now to derive the relationship we need we need four equations that we have met two from higher and two from advanced higher. So from higher, QV is a half mv squared. That's the work done in accelerating our electrons, and that work done is transferred to kinetic energy. From advanced higher, the force that acts on the charges when they enter the magnetic field is QVB. That makes them move in a circle, so that's equal to a centripetal force, mv squared over r, and we can equate them as well, qvb equals mv squared over r. Now on the left, if we rearrange for v squared, so v squared is 2qv over m. Remember, big V is the voltage, the anode voltage. And on the right, if we cancel, V on each side and rearrange for Q over M. Q over M equals V over BR. If we square everything on the right hand side there. So Q squared over M squared is V squared over B squared R squared. And now we have V squared on the left, V squared on the right, and we can substitute in that expression on the left into our expression on the right. Then cancelling a Q over M on each side, we get the relationship we're looking for. Q over M is 2V over B squared R squared. Now that relationship is in the manual for the deflection tube. 
Um, it's not derived very well, but there it is. That's the same relationship. So all we need to measure is the potential difference across the electron gun. That's the anode voltage. The size of the magnetic field or the magnetic induction, to give it its proper name, that's B. And the radius of the electron beam, the circular path that the electron beam falls. That's all we need to measure. Now our anode voltage is going to be kept constant. We're keeping that at uh, 4,500 volts, 4.5 kilovolts. Not going to change that. And the size of the magnetic field can be found using a relationship that's in the manual for the deflection tube. So we calculate that using a little equation that's buried in the instruction manual. Now it looks horrific, that relationship there, but underneath there's a kind of easy way in because all that stuff there approximates to a constant of 4.2 times 10 to the minus 3 times the current that we measure. So the size of the magnetic field is just a constant times the current and that constant is 4.2 times 10 to the minus 3. So all we need to do is multiply that by our currents and we get the size in a magnetic field. And the last thing we need is the radius of the beam and the relationship for that is also given in the instruction manual and we will be deriving this relationship a little bit later on, right at the very end of the video. But the radius is x squared plus y squared over 2y where XY is just a point on the grid that the electron beam passes through. Now it can be any point. So now we've got our relationship and all we need now is our measurements and results for V and B and R and we can proceed. Now we could just go to the table and take one row of our results because we've got a voltage and a magnetic field and a radius and we could put them into the relationship and calculate a value for the charge to mass ratio. For example, if we just take the first row where the anode voltage was 4.5 kilovolts, the size of the magnetic field was 8.4 times 10 to the minus 4 tesla and the radius was 0.27 if we put all those values in, we get a value for QRM of 1.75 times 10 to the 11 coulombs per kilogram. Now how does that compare with the quoted value? Let's look it up from Wikipedia. And if I zoom in on the value and we round it correctly, it's 1.76 times 10 to the 11 coulombs per kilogram. That's pretty good. And we could stop there. And if you do want to stop there, that's fine. But the rest of the video is where we use Microsoft Excel to do a graphical procedure to determine a value for Q over M. This will also indicate the uncertainty in our final value. So with our initial calculation. Were we just lucky? Was it a fluke? Can we be confident in this result? What about our uncertainties? Well, a more robust and reliable experimental approach would be to use all the data we collected and draw a graph of that data and use the gradient to work out a value for Q over M. We can be more confident in this value and identify any systematic issues. So let's take all of that data that we collected and draw a graph. Right, there's all my results in an Excel spreadsheet. I've added columns for 1 over B squared and R squared. And the reason for that is that when we draw the graph, I'm going to have 1 over B squared on my X axis and R squared on the Y axis. And the reason for that is that the gradient of the graph, which is y over x, will be r squared over 1 over b squared, which is b squared r squared, 
and that gradient can go straight into the relationship Q over M equals 2V over V squared R squared. Now there's my graph and I have asked Excel to show the equation of the line on the graph and so the gradient is 5.2 times 10 to minus 8. Now remember that gradient is B squared R squared because it's R squared over 1 over B squared which is B squared R squared. So all I need to do is take the 5.2 times 10 to the minus 8 and substitute that in for b squared r squared. That gives us 1.73 times 10 to the 11 coulombs per kilogram. And we can use the line est function in Excel. Line est is a function that allows us to work out the uncertainty in the gradient. And there it is in those little four cells there. I'll just highlight there's the gradient and underneath it the uncertainty in the gradient. And I can work out that as a percentage, it works out to be 3%. So our value with its uncertainty ties in nicely with the quoted value of 1.76 times 10 to 11 coulombs per kilogram. There you go then, that's charge to mass ratio for an electron. Bingo! Right, this last wee bit is the derivation of the relationship to calculate the radius of your electron beam from a single point on the grid. The manual's not that helpful, it gives us this wee diagram which shows the electron beam exiting the anode and its curved path. Now we can derive the radius equation just using a wee bit of Pythagoras. If I draw a red dotted line on the diagram that gives us a right angled triangle and the hypotenuse of that right angled triangle is the radius. And the vertical side will be the radius minus y, and the horizontal side is x. Then using Pythagoras then, r squared is x squared plus r minus y squared. So if we multiply out the brackets, we end up with x squared plus r squared minus 2yr plus y squared. And then with a little bit of algebra, if we just swap a few things round, we will get r squared minus r squared plus 2yr equals x squared plus y squared. We lose that first little bit. And 2yr equals x squared plus y squared. So r is x squared plus y squared over 2y. Bingo!